Welcome to Better Police Reports. I'm Jean Reynolds. Today's topic is objectivity. When you think about the objectivity requirement for police reports, it seems pretty straightforward. Just the facts, ma'am. No opinions, no bias, no emotions. But when you look more closely at objectivity, it becomes more complicated. So we're going to be talking about two issues today. The first one is labels. I often read police reports that label people. So for example, someone will talk about an emotional victim, an uncooperative witness, a belligerent suspect, or an aggressive suspect. Those are subjective statements, meaning they're opinions. And if you label people in your report, you might be challenged later on. So you want to avoid labels. And we're going to talk about how to do that. So what I'd like to do is set up an imaginary situation outside of law enforcement that I think is going to clarify this point. So I want you to imagine that we have a teenager and a parent, and they are having a disagreement about a curfew. The teenager, we'll call him Junior, Junior thinks that he's calmly and reasonably stating why he should have a later curfew. But the parent, mom, is hearing defiance, disrespect. Now you may have run into this yourself when you were growing up. Someone said, stop the sarcasm. You didn't think you were using sarcasm. Take that look off your face. You didn't think you had a look on your face. So we're talking about an opinion or subjectivity. I'm calm and reasonable. You're defiant. You're disrespectful. Now, let's switch for a moment to a law enforcement situation. You have um, a hostile suspect. Is that an opinion or is that an objective fact? It's an opinion. Think about this. When, uh, if there's a court hearing, your suspect may have an attorney who's going to say, my client was just trying to explain the situation to the officer. There was no hostility. When you think about our family, um, let's say that mom decides that she's really tired of Junior's attitude and she's going to ground him. He says, Mom, I was just trying to explain. Who's going to win in that situation? Well, in most families, mom will. But now think about a courtroom. It's you, the officer, a client, and an attorney. Are you sure you're going to win? No, you're not. So you don't want to put yourself into that situation. So how do you avoid it? And let's state it differently. Is there a way that we can look at this situation with Junior and Mom and determine whether Junior objectively is defiant and respectful or if he really is calm and reasonable. Yes, there is. What you would do is make a list of his behaviors. So, for example, what voice is he using? Is it a normal conversational voice or is he shouting? Um, is he listening to his mother or is he interrupting? Uh, is he sticking to the subject of giving reasons for a later curfew, or is he injecting comments like, you're stupid, you're hateful, you're an old witch? Uh, what about um, body language? For example, is he rolling his eyes when she's talking? All of these are ways to figure out whether he is calm and reasonable or disrespectful and defiant. And that's the same principle that you use in a police report. Don't use the labels list the behaviors. So what I'd like to do now is switch to a law enforcement situation. So I want you to imagine we have an officer who needs to talk to a woman we'll call Mary. And when he encounters Mary, she's with a group of other people. Um, they make contact. And I'm going to show you the first thing she says. And the officer later is going to write this, he's going to conclude that Mary is hostile. And he's going to write a report, he's going to write this sentence, and he's going to say she was hostile. My question to you is, is that objective or subjective? In other words, is it an opinion or is it a fact? So here's what she said. 
Now, what do you think? Is this hostile? If there was a court hearing, could she argue that she wasn't hostile, that she was cooperating? The answer is yes. The word hostile is not enough to be convincing. Are you talking to me could be trying to clarify the situation. Maybe the situation is noisy. She's a little nervous about talking to a police officer. There are other people with her. She's saying, are you talking to me? On the other hand, perhaps this is what's happening. Are you talking to me? So let's say that that's really what Mary did. How would you document that? Please don't say she was hostile. That does not carry any kind of weight. What you can do is talk about her voice. She was shouting. You could talk about her body language, the hands on the hips, the jabbing finger, and then turning away as the officer tried to question her. So don't label list. All right, let's go on to our second issue, and that's the issue of intuition, uh, a hunch, a flash of understanding. And had some interesting discussions with police officers over the years about this because it cr creates a problem with objectivity. Now think about this. You're a highly trained police officer. Uh, you may have years of experience, and that means you have developed your intuition and you've developed your thinking skills. So you pick up on situations very quickly. Yet, you are not allowed to use your intuition or your reasoning in a police report. You can never say, based on my experience, I knew. The situation looked suspicious. My intuition told me. I had a hunch. All of those things are considered subjective. Uh, they're opinions. Uh, if you've watched my previous videos, you've already figured out that I'm talking about probable cause, and probably this is a type 4 report. So instead of being dispatched to a situation, you see a developing situation, it needs police intervention, you get involved, and then later on you have to write about it. And what you've got to deal with is a hunch. It won't fly. So what's the answer? How do you document this? You need to go back to your list. And what I'm going to do for a moment is talk about the psychological definition of intuition, because I think that's going to help you understand this and know what to do in your report. When you and I think about intuition, we think about this gut feeling or a flash of insight. But psychologists say that intuition is actually a rational process, but it's hidden. It's unconscious. So you might be thinking about where you're going to eat dinner tonight, but some part of your brain that you can't hear is logically working through a reasoning process. So that's part of the definition. The second part of the definition is this rational process is based on a series of facts. So now you know what to do with your report. You need to go back and reconstruct the facts that your intuition picked up on. And I'm going to make a suggestion uh, for a project that you might want to do both on duty and off duty. Get into the habit of watching people and then afterwards trying to list their behavior. In other words, train yourself to observe and remember. And you're going to be strengthening those parts of your brains. And it's going to come in very useful in a crisis where you have to go back and say, now what was it that triggered my suspicions? You'll be able to remember. All right, so let's go back to your police report, what you're going to put into it. I have a story that I think illustrates this point very well. It may be a familiar story to you. In 2006, a highway patrol officer in Nevada was doing what he thought was a routine traffic stop. He'd done thousands of them. And his intuition told him that something else was going on here. Of course, he had no idea what. So he began to investigate, and what he discovered is that the passenger in the back seat was on the FBI's 10 most wanted list. You may have heard of him. His name was Warren Jeffs, and he was a rogue religious leader. He was the head of a large polygamous compound, a compound where people practiced polygamy, one man, many wives. And Jeffs was wanted for arranging marriages for underage girls 
and for sexually abusing girls. So that was a fine piece of police work. But it gets better. In court, Jeff's attorney argued that the search was illegal. Jeff wasn't even driving the car. He was in the back seat. There was no reason to question him. The officer's police report, the officer's highway patrol report, was so well written that it held up in court. Jeff was convicted, and Jeff is still in prison today. Now, what did this officer write in his report? One of the things, instead of saying, my intuition told me, he noticed that Jeffs was overreacting to the traffic stop. Remember, Jeffs wasn't even driving the car. And one of the things he noticed was that Jeffs' carotid ar artery was extended and it was throbbing. So he was petrified. Petrified of what? And that led to blowing open the case. So to recap, don't label list. Train your powers of observation and memory. And remember that intuition is based on reason and a series of facts. And you want to put that series of facts into your report. Uh, you will find out more about objectivity at my website, www.yourpoliceright.com. And I have a PowerPoint there about objectivity that you might find helpful and some other materials as well. Everything on my website is free and no registration is required. My book, Criminal Justice Report Writing, has a whole chapter about objectivity. It includes an activity that you can do to test your understanding and the answers are in the back of the book. The book is available in paperback and ebook editions, and it's inexpensive. You can read a free preview at www.amazon.com. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching.